we're going to explore a place with volcanoes, lush vegetation, beautiful coastlines. So come with me and let's explore the Azores. Today, we'll take you to an archipelago of islands that lie in the middle of the North Atlantic. Geologically, this is an interesting place for three reasons. First, it lies on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that runs the length of the Atlantic and separates North American continent from Europe and Africa. Second, it also lies on a triple junction, a point that separates North America, European, and African tectonic plates. And third, to top it off, the archipelago also lies on a volcanic hotspot where a plume of hot material rises from the core mantle boundary. These three characteristics create a unique place in the world to study volcanism and plate tectonics. When you first approach Pico Island from the air, you can't help but notice an unusual texture in the landscape. As you drop down, you realize that what you see are hundreds of walls arranged in geometric patterns that seem to protect the vineyards. It turns out that these walls serve two purposes. First, to shelter the vines from the coastal wind, and second, the dark volcanic rock keeps the vines warm in the winter. Upon closer inspection, you can also appreciate how those vines are tapping into very little surface soil. In fact, you can even see some lava flow textures on that surface, which we'll talk about shortly. I'm on the Planalto Tachada, one of the three volcanic complexes on Pico Island. There are three complexes. We have behind me in the fog or in the clouds, the Pico Mountain on the western end. And then there's this ridge that we're on right now with all these little spatter cones and uh, little cinder cones. There could be as many as 190 throughout this area. Pretty remarkable how active this ridge line was. The general trend of these smaller cones is east-west, which is not surprising since it follows the orientation of the plate boundary between Europe and Africa. The third complex is Topo Volcano, which is the oldest complex and was the first to form. In fact, Topo gave rise to Pico Island over 300,000 years ago. Since that time, volcanism has spread to the north and west to increase the area of the island to what we see today. When not in the fog, Pico Volcano is an imposing mountain and the highest point in all of Portugal. It's a relatively young volcano, only about 6,000 years old, and last erupted in 1720. One of the last major flows to make it down the mountain back in the 1700s made it nine kilometers to the coast, which gives you an idea of how hot and fluid that flow was. Uh, in addition, the mountain's pretty steep, so it had a lot of momentum from flowing down the mountain. If you look back at the volcano, you can see a dark streak or band that corresponds to the last flow. And if you come to the coast, there's very little vegetation in the area where the flow made it to the sea. And the little vegetation that exists is still trying to get a foothold. As you come to the toe of the flow, you get a myriad of shapes that reflect the viscosity of the flow. These are called Pahoy Hoy textures. You can also find Pahoy Hoy ropey textures as well. And then you see some collapsed cavities called tumuli, found right to the edge of the sea. When you walk to the edge of the flow, you have to be careful because you could be walking on a lip with nothing below it. And sometimes they do collapse. The lavas are very porous. See all those little tiny, tiny vesicles. And it's very rough. Not recommend walking barefoot on this. There are a lot of fractures in the undulating surface due to pressure ridges that build up from the fresh lava 
that keeps pushing older lava towards the ocean. When the rock can't arch or fold, it will fracture as you see here. Here is one more example of ropey lava at a much smaller scale, and the red color is an oxidation weathering effect. One of the remarkable things about this island are all the little villages, and right behind them, they use these mountain hillsides all the way to the top for agriculture, for terracing, for wine growing, or any other kind of agriculture. It's pretty remarkable. As you wander through some of the towns along the north coast, you can't help but notice how black basalt dominates the construction materials in a very creative way. Before moving on to our next topic, I want to show you some close-ups of rock fragments that can be found at numerous places on the island. What caught my eye was the blue color and the iridescence. The rapid cooling of molten basalt often produces a tachylite, which is a glassy basalt, but not quite obsidian. And the blue is probably caused by the presence of numerous minerals, perhaps manganese or copper or even titanium. To the west of Pico Mountain is an access point to a very impressive lava tube that may extend as much as five kilometers underground. These tubes form when a flow develops a surface crust that solidifies, but there is still molten lava flowing below ground. Once the source of the lava stops, the flow in the tube continues until it is empty, leaving the void that we can explore. As soon as we descend through the skylight into the tube, you can start to see the textures on the walls and ceiling of stalactites, which are not the same as limestone stalactites. These lava sickles, as they are sometimes called, is the effect of rock that has melted as soon as it came in contact with hot molten lava. You can also see some red and even yellow mineralization on the rock surfaces, indicating the presence of biomineralization by bacteria, and mold. After spending an hour underground, it was time to leave the tube. As I explored the coastline and looked toward the ocean, I noticed a large number of Portuguese man-o-wars floating in the surf. These organisms are siphonophores and are unusual in that they consist of a number of clones called zoids that make up the whole Portuguese man -o -war organism. Each zoid has a particular function that contributes to the larger entity. We also see this adaptation in lichen, which is composed of bacteria, fungi, and other organisms. As it was windy here, the Portuguese man -o -wars were being pushed towards the shoreline, and I noticed a number of them had washed up onto the rocks. It was impressive to see so many of them in one spot. They are very colorful against the dark sand and basaltic rocks. As many of you know, Portuguese man -o -war are very toxic. They have long tentacles with stinging cells called nematocysts that can inflict severe and instantaneous pain. These nematocysts are like harpoons loaded with a strong toxin just waiting to be triggered by brushing up against a victim. When triggered, the nematocysts fire their harpoon at up to 5 million Gs, or 5 million times the acceleration of gravity. For comparison, test pilots will pass out at 9 to 12 Gs. In 700 nanoseconds, the harpoon hits its target, and it's all over for the victim. Tentacle strands can extend up to 30 meters, or about 100 feet in length. And when a fish or prey touches the stinger, it's almost instantaneously paralyzed and the strand is pulled up toward the mouth where the prey is dissolved by chemicals and ingested by the Portuguese man -o war On our last day on Pico Island, we decided to take a little boat trip to do some dolphin watching. As we zipped around the southern part of the island, we were fortunate to see four different species of dolphin. This part of the Atlantic is well known for dolphin and whale watching. Deep currents and upwelling water around the islands brings food and nutrients to the surface where these magnificent animals can feed during their long migrations. Clear water, no pollution, and legal protection also enable different species to thrive in this sanctuary. Historically, whaling was part of the Azorean culture. 
but ever since this practice was banned, the whale spotters have turned to working with tour operators to build a thriving ecotourism business. This was the perfect way to end our short stay on Pico Island, a place that has so much to offer with lush vegetation, fantastic geology, and friendly people.